Welcome once again to Willie Farms. I'm Donna Cavender. We've got another great show for you today. We're going to talk about bees. We're going to talk about the fruits and vegetables that are available this time of year. And right now we're filming in April. So we've got mushrooms and mangoes and artichokes. Rainbow chard. We're going to have a recipe on that. We're also going to do a recipe with lemons. So hope you'll stick around for that. That's coming up. It's always our favorite uh, segment of the show is the cooking part. So we hope that you'll stick around for all of it. We're here at Willie Farms, Route 13, very easy to find. If you're traveling on Route 1, we're just north of, of Smyrna or just south of Odessa. Route 13, Townsend. Check it out on our website at www.willyfarmsde.com. We've got a show to do, so let's go. We're going to talk about bees first. Well, welcome to the greenhouse. I'm here with Bob Bauer from Midnight Honey Apiary. Thanks for coming by today, Bob. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Bob is one of our vendors. He supplies some of the honey that we sell here at Willie Farms. Beautiful looking honey. And again, uh, this is, uh, it says wildflower honey on the back here. Right. And uh, Bob, how long have you been in the bee and honey business? Uh, since 2008, so eight or nine years right now. I've been sort of real small doing bees and just one or two hives and they really kind of grow on you. You know, I really mm -hmm. love doing it. Then farmers started asking if I had enough to help them pollinate, and so I just grew enough to provide some to farmers and up to about 30 hives now. Okay, 30 hives. Okay, yeah. and how many bees is that? Um, one hive, in, in, in the winter it, it goes down. You know, there's less in the winter, 10,000, but in the summer you have 50 or 60,000 in one hive. Wow, and you yeah. have how many hives? Uh, 30. Good grief, that's right, a lot of bees. Yeah. That's a lot of bees. Yeah. Well, great. Well, today we're gonna to talk about not only bees, but other things. We're gonna talk about how to be pollinator friendly. Right. And you brought this subject up and um, we were talking about it and we said, okay, well, what does that mean, pollinator friendly? And apparently there's an issue with that. Right, there, there's an issue that um, it just manifested itself from people that move in, you know, new developments going in and they, for a new development, they normally just plow over, you know, whatever bushes are in there to put in the houses. Okay. And then people want to put in like beautiful ornamentals, which is fine. Um, but those ornamentals don't feed any of the pollinators in any way. Okay. So really the, the, the theme of this is planting some natives, some, okay. some native shrubs and flowers and trees along with with everything else in your yard. You don't have to get rid of the exotic things, but just right. plant some native stuff. Okay, there's, there's a compromise there. Right. All right, so let's talk about who are the pollinators? Who are we talking about? Okay, so I started off with honeybees is where I learned, right? So okay. honeybees are considered managed pollinators because I can take 50,000 of them and lend them to a, a farmer, right? Okay. So they're considered managed and everything else is not really managed. You have, you have the bumblebees, which come out when it's colder weather so that's important for people with like apple trees mm -hmm. that bloom, if they, apple trees bloom for like one week, right? And if it happens to be kind of chilly that week, my honeybees aren't gonna be out on your apple tree, but okay. if you have native bees like the bumblebees and apple or, or orchard bees, you can get pollinated because you helped encourage natives, you know, with the, with the that. plants right. and everything. Okay, right. so it's not only bees, but it's also other pollinators that we were worried right. about too. Right, so, there's, so we have um, butterflies, and you don't think of that, but butterflies and moths. Okay. You don't think of the moths either, but right. if you look at like zinnias or something, mm -hmm. there's gonna be a lot of little moths on there. You don't hardly see them because they're brown, tiny, right. they're called skippers or whatever, right. but they're there pollinating you know, as well. And we need these pollinators. Need right. Uh, if you have, not only for your flowers in the yard, right. but, but if right. you have a garden. Right. If you've got a garden and you're wondering, right. well, why didn't I have as many tomatoes last year or right. peppers or right. cucumbers or whatever, that's, right. and that's probably because the population of our pollinators has decreased. Right, so, so the native, most of the native pollinators grew up in like meadows, right? You look at an old-fashioned meadow where there's right. just anything could grow there. All the the clover and right, all the clover that sort of and thing. and the cone flowers, mm -hmm. the black-eyed susans, the okay, you know the daisies used to grow there. But those 
areas where no one ever touches are going away, right? Mm -hmm. So most of the, a lot of pollinators are going away. Like all the, like a lot of little sweat bees and stuff like that, they grow in like the little reeds of, okay. you know, reeds of, of a plant and when it dies, there's a little reed. So they lay egg in it, they'll put pollen and lay egg and put pollen and all these bees will be in this little reed. Okay. But people mow this down, you know, farmers hmm. not knowing would mow that once a year mm -hmm. and those are all gone. So what we can do to help out is to do a little compromise. Right. You come in with your home, whether it's a new home or an established home, and you want it to look right. really nice. And right. we understand that. But what you're trying to get out to the people is that you can make it look really nice by using some of the pollinator friendly uh, right. trees and flowers right. and bushes and things like that. So it's still going to look beautiful, That's but right. you're also going to be friendly to the pollinators and everybody loves to see the butterflies right. flying around right. in the yard. It's great. And we're kind of encouraging people not to swat at the bees, right? right. <laughs> we don't want right. to, we don't want to right. swat at the bees too much. Right. Um, we can understand that, but um, right. we, we want to try to be as friendly with them right. as we possibly can. Right. So another thing with the, so we're talking about putting in native plants and mm -hmm. we can go in that more. But another thing is, is you have clover and dandelion in your yard, right? Yeah. People don't like it. They don't like that. And so I dig up my dandelion. Right. Right. I do. I don't spray. Right. I guess that's better. <laughs> but right. I don't right. spray, right. but I do try to dig them right. up. Um, because well right. they are pretty but they are invasive and right. you leave them there and it's right. just you'll have one great big yard of dandelions. Right, you would. Yeah. Right. So so I would ask, like, if you are going to spray them, which most people will, mm -hmm. spray, in the, spray them in the evening is better than spraying at noon. So there's all these dandelions and clover in your yard. Mm -hmm. You spray at noon, the bees come down to it anyway, and the bees are going to pick up that poison, right? Oh, so if okay. you spray in the evening, mm -hmm. um, they're going to be in. They go in kind of early, and you can still do the same thing. So it's all about okay. education even with you know mowing your yard or something mm -hmm. it's about education where you can do the same thing and have the same effect but really have a lot better outcome because you sprayed them in the evening right so you give day. you give all the pollinators whatever they are the bees the butterflies right. and everything you give right. them a chance to come in and feed right. Right. and get the nectar and do whatever it is that right. they need to do in the yard right and then they go away right go and, and then right and then they just spray it in the evening so most of it will be dead by tomorrow they're not landing on it and things like right, that. You know? Right, right. Okay, all right. Very good. And um, what are the other ways that we can help? Let's talk about some of the specific bushes and trees. Now, we're talking about butterflies. Not only do we want to be friendly as they pollinate, but we want to be friendly to actually draw the butterflies to our yard and right. give them a, a habitat where they can actually lay their eggs and grow. Right. Okay, right. so let's talk about butterflies. Okay. How do, we, um, how do we be friendly in that regard? How do we attract them? And what do we need in our yard to make them stay and lay the eggs and then become mm -hmm. more butterflies? Okay, so I'll start where I started out on butterflies was the monarch butterfly, because it's the most iconic one, because it flies from... Beautiful monarch yeah. butterfly. Monarch <laughs> butterfly, because it's the only one that migrates, right? It, it goes mm -hmm. all the way from Mexico. Mexico throughout the country, several generations, ends up in Canada, and then in the fall, the, that butterfly flies 2,000 miles back down to Mexico, okay? Um, so uh, Mexico's been having a problem where sometimes you get cold weather, but then um, they're having deforestation, which is something you, we can't help, right? Right. People are logging because they are poor, but so this one town that they all move to in the winter, um, where they stay is, is being deforested, right? So we can't help with that, but what we can help with, like for instance, the butterfly is like planting milkweed, okay. which there's more than one kind of milkweed. We all think of the ugly one that looks like a um, rubber tree plant, right. you know, and gets yellow in the fall, but there's other varieties of milkweed. So, that are prettier. Yeah, there's one here called like the butterfly weed and stuff okay. like that. And so that's that's to get the monarch right mm -hmm. but all the other butterflies you you don't think about it, but they came from caterpillars right mm -hmm. so oak trees like a simple oak and simple maple they lay their eggs on those mm -hmm. and then you have the caterpillars you don't even you don't even see them these trees are big 
and you can feed like there's 500 insects alone that feed on different type of oh wow type plants. Okay? okay, all right. So and these trees are really big. So right. when the when the caterpillars come, and they do start to eat the leaves. Right. But it's not something that they're going right. to strip the right. the tree. Right. They're just eating a little bit to to sustain themselves, and then they right. go through the stages of going from a caterpillar to the chrysalis. Is that to next? Chrysalis. And then right. Okay. Right. 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 So, um, so like for instance, if you have um, a non-native bush there, all the leaves look perfect, mm -hmm. um, and people go, "This is great because yeah. nothing eats it. All the leaves are beautiful." And then you have a native one, mm -hmm. and you have little circles cut out of them, and right. leaves shoot up, and you go, "I don't like that one." Right. But for the insects, and you know, I hate to say invite insects to your yard. <laughs> Because it's not a good sell. Well, but listen, the insects are the building blocks. Sure. The birds eat them, you know, and then, you know, the. Uh, uh, it's all part of a life cycle. It's all about uh, if you really want to be um, a nature steward, okay, insects are important. Mm -hmm. Just like the krill and the algae in the ocean mm -hmm. is the building blocks. You don't think about it, but the insects are really the building blocks. Okay. For all the larger animals that eat the insects. And the insects turn the plant into like animal, right, meat from the sun's energy. So we have the sun's energy, plants. These insects are important to be turning it into like the animal kingdom. And, um, and many things feed on the insects. So they're important and we need to take care right. of them. And right. we've got, uh, there are a lot of books out that, that right. they can get more information if you're really interested in this and, and making sure that you have a pollinator friendly yard and how to make right. it all happen. There's lots of great information in these books and some pictures that you can you can check out to, to so that you know what you're looking at when you're seeing something in your yard and you go, oh, I don't know whether that's good or I don't right. know whether that's bad. Right. So. All right, so being pollinator friendly, we're gonna try our best, Bob, okay. to be pollinator friendly. And one more thing, we're okay. very excited about the butterfly project that we've got coming up here at Woolly Farms. Uh, a little bit right. later on in the summer, right. we're actually gonna grow butterflies. That's right, yes. We are, and Bob's gonna help us yeah. with that. We're very excited about that. And we'll have more details on that, of course, in the shows to come. So, right. Bob, thank you so much oh. for all the great information. Really You're appreciate welcome. it. All right. You're welcome. Well, here we are on location today. We're here at the Young Bean with Eric Young, and we're here because Eric roasts coffee. Now, Eric, does that make you a barista, or what does that make you? Uh, well, the barista stuff is behind the counter, but okay. I, I can do that too. And uh, coffee roasting is a whole different uh, ball game. And, okay. You know, so that's right. a whole different. I have one other person that helps me out sometimes. But. Okay, great. And we're going to get into detail on that. But we're here because your coffee is sold at Willie Farms. It is. It is. Thank okay. You. So how did you get into coffee roasting? Basically, um, this place was uh, for sale in town. I had lived around the corner at the time, and it was available. This town needed a center for coffee and whatnot and art and music and it really needed something and I kind of went from there and it was an old place and I'm into the old style stuff just like Willie Farms is. They have a lot mm -hmm. of that old country feel right. and I was after that look and then I ended up with an old roaster that I restored. And oh, now where did you get the roaster? I actually drove to uh, Indianapolis to get it. Wow. Off of an old uh, uh, guy who had a peanut business, he had roasters and he made popcorn, peanuts, he did all this kind of stuff. He okay. had, it, had it available and it's about 1900 or older. Wow. So I jumped into it. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, that's great. And the building is great. The building is 1850. It was the old town hall, town jail. It was a post office at one point. I think the Boy Scouts met here, the meetings, Masons, you name it. Um, old town safe, it's still here. Um, the out back was a two cell jail. So I got the jail bars sitting up a Oh, so if people get a little rowdy in here, you yeah, can just yeah. put them out back and put them in the cell. That's right, yeah. yeah. Now, it's a, now it's a one bedroom apartment, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, so the roasting process, how does that go? When, where do you get the, the beans are green when you get them? Right. Um, and where does that come from? I have a guy that I work with up in Massachusetts, and um, he's actually from Bolivia, and his family's in Bolivia, and so he has the beans come over. He only, handle, he only has four different. Um, 
single origin bean. He does Brazilian, Bolivian, of course, Costa Rican, and Colombian. So mm -hmm. those are my faint, my uh, four main beans that I use. Sometimes I'll get some different ones here and there, mm -hmm. like Madagascar or whatnot. But I get them in green. I don't know if it's, here's one, a little one here. Okay, a little one. And, um, and it looks you, just uh, very green. Yeah. Not much to it. Now, do all coffee beans start the same? Um, are they the same? And then the, it's the roasting process that that creates the different flavors and different it's, things like that? It's the roasting process. Um, they're different sizes. There's different species. Okay. Um, so do you get the same kind? I, well, those four I do. Okay. The, the ones I get from there. All right. And then um, you roast them and they expand and they crack like popcorn. They crack a couple times. And, okay. And they uh, they get roasted up. And, All um, right. And one of the unique things is like Willie's has the... Uh, you know, farm feel and, you know, that kind of style. Right. Well, the roaster's the same way. The mm -hmm. roaster's, a flame tips them, so it's a very unique taste to it, unlike other coffee roasting you might get in okay. the store and stuff. So it's very unique, and it, right. it fits well with the building and, um, you know, different farm farmer's markets right. style. And we're going to take a look at the roaster. We're going to go out and, and take a look at that and see the process. And you've got some beans that are just, just getting ready to they're, come out of the roaster, They should think. be ready in about 10 minutes or okay. less. They could be ready now. We'll have to go check. <laughs> this will be the second batch of the day, so okay. it should be really good. Now, how did you come up with the name, the, the Navigator? The, oh, the... I'm, a, uh, I'm a C-130 Navigator up in uh, Newcastle in the Air Guard. And, uh, okay. Yeah. And that's the stamps I put on all the bags. You can see the airplane. And I've heard a different, I had come up with a name besides the name of the business. You know, there's cowboy coffee, there's this kind of coffee. I right. said, well, why not Navigator coffee? That's kind of unique. And why not? Kind of an antique myself, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that at all. And I know that uh, when I first stopped by to, uh, to talk to you, you weren't even here. You were deployed. Right. I yeah. was uh, overseas on the eighth or ninth one. I can't remember which one it was. Oh, my so, gosh. Uh, back roasting coffee and... Uh, it's nice to have my own coffee for a change. And yeah, nice to be home. And, and this is a great, nice little homey uh, coffee shop here. And I'm sure the people in, in uh, Clayton um, really appreciate it. They, re they really do love it. Here, my regulars are here every day. All right, right. Well, thank you for your service, number one. Thanks. And now, let's go take a look at that roaster. Let's check it out. Okay. Well, this is how it comes in. We're out in the uh, roasting building right now. That's the green coffee beans right there. Let's go take a look at uh, what happens after they put it in that beautiful vintage roaster. So come on, let's go here. Eric is here, and um, you can tell it's a little noisy. He puts that in there to give a take a look and see if it's roasted enough. And it's kind of an eyeball thing. You just sort of look at it. And this is what he goes by. This is the green bean right here. And then as long as you roast it, it just gets darker and darker. And uh, Eric, you said we're looking for about number 14 here today. Yeah, a little dark, a little bit oily. That's how people want it in the uh, coffee shop. And uh, I think we're, we're about there. You guys ready to dump it? Okay, let's dump the coffee beans. Hear him crack a little bit. Now, a little quieter now. You were saying about the, the crackle. You can still hear it pop. Oh, I hear. They're still expanding a little bit. They're gonna, okay. they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna cook a little bit in here. That's why I, sometimes I'll dump it a little bit early. Okay. And now we're really just gonna cool them off before we uh, bag it and um, ship it off. Or Wonderful. Ship it, or to the shop or Now these beans, else. you were talking about the um, country of origin. You come from uh, four different countries. And, and which country uh, are these beans from? Uh, this is Costa Rican. Okay. And this is also the same beans um, we make uh, vodka out of. Oh, no. You make vodka out of these same beans? These go to the... Uh, down to the Painted Stave in Smyrna, and uh, they make a, a Time Warp Espresso Vodka. It's wow. Actually in the liquor stores in Delaware now. <laughs> How about that? So we um, cool these off. And now what's the temperature? What does the temperature get up to in, in the roaster? It ended up um, topping out about 350. Wow, okay. About 350. 
And this is the vintage roaster that you were talking about earlier, oh, about 100 years old at this point. Yep, this is a Royal Number no. 5. Royal Number no. 5, yeah. okay. Made by the same company as the Royal Typewriters, if you want to think about that, New York, oh, wow. New York State. Wow. Now you, um, you will stir this around and get this cooled off a little bit, and then it just goes right in your bags? It goes right in the bags or the jars. I sell it in the shop, mm -hmm. um, and just different places like Willie Farms will get it too. And you are really a, a one-man band back here, aren't you? I mean, you, you have the paper bags and you yeah. put a stamp on the paper yeah. bags, yeah. Which, which are awesome with the Navigator brand on there. And you make note of the uh, country of origin there, Costa Rica. You bag it up and, and take it into your shop or you uh, take it to Willie Farms and, and we sell it there too. Yep. That is awesome. And how long have you been doing this? 2012 is okay. when this building was finished out here. Okay. And we started immediately on the roaster. And you had the coffee shop since? 2010. All right. So we're just past five years now. Excellent. Well, it looks like you're doing a wonderful job. Are you still enjoying it? That's a lot of fun. Because it started out fun. as a hobby? Started out as a hobby, um, just something for, cool for the town and um, art, music. It's just a uh, meeting Well, that's right. Now. You were telling me there in the coffee shop you have on, is it Friday nights you have music? Live every, music? Every Friday, night, every Friday night we have music and dinner inside. Uh, wow. Prepared That's by, awesome. Prepared from Kathy. All right. That is awesome. So there it is, the process of roasting coffee from the green bean to the finished product here. Eric, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. Now, you just bag all this up and bring it out to Willie Farms, okay? I'll bring it right over to you. Nice and warm. All right. Yep. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> thank you. And so here we are once again at our favorite spot. We're at the sampling station. I'm here with Eileen. Hi, Donna. Hello. And we're going to do some cooking, of course. Now, today we're talking about the fruits and vegetables that are in season this yes. time of year. And yes. uh, one of the things, we'll talk about the rest of them, but one of the things that is in season is this beautiful yes. rainbow chard. This is Swiss chard, and it comes in uh, three different colors. It comes in yellow, red, and white. The stems are the multiple colors, but the top greens, the ends are mainly green or red. Okay. So we're going to saute them today. Okay. So is there a particular name for this dish? Just sauteed Swiss chard. Okay. And, and you use it as a side dish? You do. You know, Swiss chard is when it's young, you can use it as a salad. Uh, but when it gets okay. mature, it's a little bit more bitter, so you want to saute it. Kind of like spinach, where you have baby spinach yes. used in a salad. Yes. And it's not okay. as bitter as spinach, though. Okay, so all right, great. So I've already put in a, a tablespoon and a half of olive oil and butter and two cloves of garlic, which I've chopped up. Okay. So I'm kind of sauteing that. I've done this for a couple minutes. Okay. And then after that, we kind of drop our two bunches of chopped up Swiss chard in the frying pan. Okay. And this frying pan has a lot of love, you see? I, yeah, I see that. I see best. that. It's the best. It's my favorite. So if you don't mind dumping that in. Okay. Appreciate that. And like you said, you kind of need a big pan you because do, because it cooks down. It cooks and down, this but is you only have four to, people. This yeah, is only for four people. You have to start with a bunches. big with a big pan. Yes. All right. So this is going to take about eight minutes to cook down. Okay. Um, I do like to add a little bit of salt. All right. Salt to that right now. And I see we have some more and a little bit of crushed red pepper, depending right. on the heat. Okay. Now I'm just doing just a little dollop. Okay. Because I don't like it too hot, but I like a little bit of flavor. All right. And then I have uh, lemon juice, a half of a lemon, which I'll do at the end. Okay. And of course our pepper, which I'll do at the end too. Okay. All right. So we'll let this sit for a little bit. Um, I have a lot of other loveliness. Okay. So let's talk about the other yes. vegetables that we have that are in season right now. Yes. Let's go over here and talk about, we have the lemons. And that's what I'm going to use is a Meyer lemon. Meyer lemon. Meyer okay. lemons are not as strong as a uh, regular lemon. That oh, that's see. the difference. That's the difference. Okay. They're great in uh, cooking. Mm -hmm. It's just not as sour. Okay. I would say. Great. That is sour. And we have here? Oh, these are snow pea shoots. These are, these are wonderful in salads and sandwiches. Uh, you can use it as a garnish. You can use it as a replacement for lettuce. Okay. Very sweet snow pea shoots. All right. And of course, our lovely asparagus. And it's on locally it's right on now. It's from Southersville, Maryland, Godfrey Farms. Okay. Uh, brings in the asparagus, and it is just top-notch right now. It's gorgeous. Right of course. Yes. It depends upon when you are um, watching this, but the local asparagus, usually, what's the season for a local asparagus? Um, Mid-April. Mid-April. To end of May. To end of May. Okay, yes. so there yeah, you go. Yeah, until it gets real hot, then asparagus is done. It likes, it, it actually grows at night in the evening when it's nice and warm. 
If it's cool at night, it stops. If it's too hot, then it just blooms out. Well, it's just downright picky, isn't it? It is, but it's beautiful. <laughs> if you've ever seen it, you have to Google asparagus in the fields. It is just amazing to see. Okay, so what else do we have? We have some uh, scallions, green onions there. Yes, green onions are on in the, in the early spring. Beets, I have a red striped beet, a red beet, and a golden beet. Golden beet? Oh, so sweet. Oh, okay. Yes. And are those mangoes that I we see over there? We have mangoes that are, that are coming in season. Of course, not from around here. Right. But in the tropical sure. area, they are, they are in season. Okay. And of course, lovely spinach. And this is actually from New Jersey, so this is on right oh, now. Right. Okay. Okay. This uh, beautiful spinach. And over on this side, we have the cilantro. Herbs. It's you know this is herb time. Herbs, lots yes, of herbs. Herb. Cilantro, parsley, and you can actually start planting them now in your oh, pots. Just bring okay. them in in the evening and put them out out you know outside. Okay, so the day. around April you can start planting your herbs. Yes. And that's when we have them here in the greenhouse as yes. well that you can go and that's plant correct. them. That's correct. And of course mushrooms. Mushrooms are available all year long. You know obviously because they're growing in greenhouses. But this right. is the time for mushrooms. It's warm in the greenhouse. You can turn off the heaters and let the mother nature do its thing. Okay. In the greenhouse. Great. Okay, so now we have had our uh, shard in there sauteing for about eight minutes. Yes. And as you can see, it has very it has uh, wilted down gone down. Quite a bit. It's wilted down quite a bit. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to add the juice of a half of a Meyer lemon. Okay, and you do that at the end. At, right at the end. Right at the end, okay. Yeah, it just has that nice fresh spring flavor, Donna. And then we're going to just stir it up real quick. Stir it up a little bit. Yeah, I just have to add a little bit of pepper. Okay, a little bit Add more pepper. That. Yep. And then we're good to go. All right, so then we get all of our um, beautiful- Now you can use this as a side or a main dish. This is wonderful with barbecue chicken. Uh, it just, it's just delightful. All right. It's just a taste of spring. Oh, I can, oh, I can smell it. Yeah, I just a bit got of garlic. a really good, good um, whiff. Has a little bit of that crushed red pepper. Okay. We use the butter, olive oil. So we put a little bit in our, mm -hmm. a little bit in here. Whoop. Whoops, got to chase it around a little bit. Okay, did you get it's yours? It's so pretty. Get yours, I get mine, Okay. and let's have a taste. Again. Sauteed mm. shard. Oh, see, I'm, I'm gonna be messy. I can tell mm. it's just kind of all over the place. Hurry, Donna. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There it is. Really good. Oh, wow. Isn't that nice? Not see, it, it's different than spinach. A little bit more flavor, not as bitter. Mm-hmm, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. And you can eat this cold too, the next day. Cold, bring it out for lunch. That's great. Little <laughs> sauteed Swiss chard, in season, in April. How That's about right. that? All right. Here at Willie Farms. Next time, I get to do lemon bars. Oh, dessert. Yes. Okay. We've had our, our good, healthy stuff. Now it's time for dessert. My favorite part. So now we've enjoyed some of our delicious rainbow chard. Now we're ready for dessert. And I'm, I'm going to show you how to do some lemon bars. Have you ever had lemon bars before? It's been a long time, but I love lemon. It, so I'm looking If you love lemon, then you'll love this. So what we have, what you have to do first is the crust. And so you've got a 9 by 13 inch pan. You make the crust in here. You just put together a half a cup of white sugar, a cup of butter, that's two sticks, and uh, two cups of all-purpose flour. You put it in a bowl like this, and the best way to do it is just get in there with get your hands, okay. and you just mix it around. Then when it gets fairly mixed together, you put it in the, in the ungreased pan, and you just flatten it out. Okay. Then you put it in the oven, 350 degrees. I did this for about um, 18 minutes. So anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, you know your oven better than anybody else. So. Right. That's how you do it. It's so just a thin layer. It's just a thin layer of the crust. And then you need to put um, your, your lemon loveliness Ooh, yeah. on top of that. So stuff. what you do, how about you start um, breaking the uh, yes, eggs? I sure will. You have a cup and a half of white sugar. Mm -hmm. So there's about a cup and there's another I got half a, show. a cup. Sorry about oh. that. I got it. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do with you? I don't know. I'll tell you what. Then there's a quarter cup of flour. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. We've got three eggs in there, another four eggs. Now you do have the juice of two lemons. Wow. And I already did a lemony. few here. Yes, it is lemony. So, and this is a nifty little gadget right here. We sell that. And I know. I, I, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, it is neat. So you get uh, the, all of the juice out of two lemons and so you get so much keeps pulp. The seeds from you get, going yeah, it through. keeps the, the seeds from going through, and you got some pulp there. Mm -hmm. And it ends up being about a half a cup. Okay. A half a cup of. We don't, don't want the those seeds to go in there. Okay. So. There we go. About a half a cup of the lemon juice. There Great. we go. 
and then you just whisk it to get together. And then you just lather the top? Yep. You spread it? Okay. You just spread it right over top. And then you have to cook it again? You have to cook it again. It's the same temperature. It's again, it's 350 degrees. And you put it in for about 20 minutes for, for the lemony. But you see how easy it is. Yes, it is. There's easy. not much to it. No. You got that sweet and sour. Oh, it's awesome. It mm -hmm. is awesome. And you know, sweet and sour is a new trend for 2016. A combination okay. of sweet and, and, and salty or sweet and sour. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, a, that's a, another trend for 2016. So you just it just takes a couple minutes, a couple seconds, actually. And then you just literally pour it over the top. No kidding. You just pour it over the top there and you make sure that it it spreads out. Yeah. And that's, really that's nice. what you take and you put that in the oven for about 20 minutes and what you come out with are these lovely oh, lemon they, bars. Oh, they look moist. You put a little confectioner sugar mm -hmm. on top, sprinkle that on top. After and it's I, cooled? Yes. Okay. After it's cooled. That's one thing I wanted to show you real quick. This was my pan that I made my, um, my finished product in, and I wanted to let people know, I cut this when it was hot, mm -hmm. and it's a little ragged, so yeah. you want to make sure that you let it cool, and I decided, why not try a pizza cutter? And it works great. So you just uh, cut nice it. Nice and clean. Yep, cut it nice and clean. Oh, I did crooked lines, didn't I? Yeah, but, too small. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> too small. But then you just pull oh, them out, yeah. put them on a plate. See, that's nice. So would you like one? Of course. Yes. And I'll take a little one. Yeah. So Cheers. here we go. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> the best lemon bars ever. The best lemon really bars. They're really, really good. They are good. Mm. Thank you, Donna. Mm. You're welcome. I love <laughs> these spots. They're great. Well, we gave a lot of information today. Hope you enjoyed it. As you can see, I am surrounded here in the greenhouse and these racks coming in every single day. We've got geraniums, we've got all of the vegetable plants that you need, so come in and check that out. Uh, don't forget, you can check us out on our website, willyfarmsde.com. Of course, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. You can find us in all of the social media. So please check us out. And uh, don't forget where we're located. It's easy, it's simple, Route 13, Townsend. If you're traveling on one, get off in Odessa, come south, or get off at Smyrna and come north. Easy to find, we're here seven days a week, eight o'clock in the morning till 7 p.m. at night. Thanks for watching today, hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna go have some more lemon bars right now. I'm Donna Cavender, have a good day.